Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Welcome back to this very special edition of Atlanta Business Radio. We are broadcasting live from Georgia State University Entrepreneurship and Innovation Institute. Lee, we're hitting our stride. We've already had a couple of fantastic episodes, tough acts to follow, but I think that this group is up to it. Uh, we're going to visit with some folks over in Clarkston. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast right out of the box here. Assistant Professor of Economics with Georgia State University Perimeter College, Clarkston, Miss Janet Orr. How are you? I am doing very well. It is sunny today, and so I'm happy. Yeah, the cold doesn't bother you? No. Not at all, huh? As long as I've got sun. <laughs> all right. So tell us about what's going on at Clarkston and this entrepreneurship initiative. Well, Clarkston is a very interesting community. We, uh, the town of Clarkston is about a little over a square mile. It's been described as the most diverse uh, square mile in the U.S. by Time Magazine. Lots and lots of people there who are looking for opportunities in the U.S. So now what made Clarkston kind of the center of this diversity? Uh, for one thing, it was a, a refugee resettlement location in, so just for in the Georgia 19, or the southeast uh, through international refugee uh, resettlement mm -hmm. so they brought a lot of people uh, back in the 1990s they just recognized it as a good place for people to come to start over to have the opportunities it's close to Atlanta it had public transportation and it had room and then um, how did you get involved with the college I have been teaching there since 2001 I've taught on Dunwoody, and then I moved over to Clarkston. Clarkston, the campus is a very exciting, dynamic campus. We've got over 140 uh, countries represented there, so you walk across campus and you see everybody and you hear every language. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just a very exciting, has a, a good vibe to it. Now, how has the campus changed with the, I guess, joining forces with GSU and now with this entrepreneurship program? The campus, um, it, it's uh, opened up opportunities, I would say. Um, in, we've always had a number of campuses as part of Georgia Perimeter, but now we've got a lot of exciting stuff downtown on the downtown campus that is coming out our way. Mm -hmm. um, my real goal, or what I see myself as doing, is actually a liaison between the Clarkston campus and the Clarkston community. We're trying to pull the community in. It's an economic disadvantaged area that needs help. We've got a college sitting there. What's a better place to help a community than a college? And so we're really pulling resources from downtown to come out to the campus, to go out to the community, to help with this idea that when I come to this country and I have skills that maybe aren't counted in this country that high if I've got a degree from a foreign country not everybody likes that degree but I've got skills and I've got drive and I want to do something and so we're helping them with that so the concept of entrepreneurship resonates oh very much so very much so a lot of our small businesses have historically been started by immigrants mm -hmm. now um, how do you kind of allow that process to happen where they can say okay I can be an entrepreneur and the school can help me achieve that goal we just really started this winter working on it uh, basically it's been an educational outreach type uh, that we're doing right now uh, we have a lady from Georgia Tech Brandy Nagel who's actually funded by the US government to do entrepreneurship in disadvantaged activities she comes out she gives presentations she does one-on-one -on -one consulting we have um, a very active entrepreneurs club that the, uh, the young men that came with me will talk more about, because um, I want them to talk about that. Um, we've got um, some funding to bring speakers, so we'll have evening programs. Uh, we have an evening program the end of March for the community, We're really pushing out to the community with it, uh, on what I wish I had known before I started my business, mm -hmm. that kind of 
practical, useful, okay, you're thinking about doing something, what do you do? How do you do? And how do you avoid some of the mistakes that other people have made? Now, do you believe that the people who are involved in the Clarkson community are so the American dream is alive and well with oh, well, them? Because, very much so. You very know, in so. traditional media, there's some cynicism that the American dream is. Uh, people don't leave everything they knew to come someplace else unless they're looking for something better. I firmly believe that. And then Clarkson's a great example of a lot of those people in one place mm -hmm, kind mm -hmm. of. And that. mass, you know, that, that critical mass also helps also. Mm -hmm. So now um, in your vision of what could be, how, how would you see it evolving? Oh, <laughs> I'm at the very beginning. Um, I'm also a very linear thinker, mm -hmm. so you've got me in this, in this bigger picture thing. Um, what I would, what my dream is, is to see the Clarkston campus of GSU, Perimeter College, be a centerpiece for the Clarkston community. We do a lot of things. We've got musical activities, we've got theater activities, but I see us being a real resource for the community. Um, normally when we think of a college town, we think of a lot of stuff going on mm -hmm. and a lot of tie-in with the college. I, like right? I would like Clarkston to feel like it's a college town. It not only has us, but right next to us is, is um, the technical college. So there's a lot of expertise right there for the town. And I think we're underutilized. And uh, are you saying underutilized in the sense that the community of Clarkston, uh, they're not taking part in the university? Yes. And so outsiders from Clarkston are coming in to use well, that? Well, a lot of our students are from Clarkston. Mm -hmm. That Not that, but I want the community as a whole to feel that, gee, if I have a question, I can go to there's somebody at the college. There that can I, help. I grew up in... in um, Maryland, right outside of Delaware. University of Delaware was a land-grant college. If you had an agricultural question, you called the college. Somebody right. answered you. We should be able to be that same kind of resource, but in terms of, I want to start my business. Somebody at the college can help me. But there's, in the community, there's lots of business people that you don't feel are kind of embracing the university as a resource, as a place to go maybe for help or a place to go for answers. I don't think it's because they don't want to. I think it's because we need to get the word out more. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's any resistance with working with us. It's just that they don't know that they can. So now as an economist background, there's supply and demand. So you think there's not enough demand, but there's enough supply? That's a good question. I, you know, as a marketing person, you know, demands what you make it. <laughs> so, That's right. <laughs> but uh, I think there's a disconnect. Markets aren't perfect. I think you have to, there's an information piece lacking. Markets need information. Right. So the demanders have to know that the supply is there. The suppliers have to know that, oh, there are people here who want that information. Our viewpoint from the college, from GSU, downtown, coming out to, to – um, from the university and then coming out to the college is that the demand is there. We've got a supply. We just have to make sure they realize that we're there. So it's just closing the education gap. Yeah, that information that every market needs complete information. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. And then what are some steps that can be taken to help get that information out there? We actually have a international institute that we're working with that is going into the um, uh, places of worship, mm -hmm. going into the library, going into um, the, we're identifying pockets where most of our students come from. So what housing development and finding students who work, or who live in that area, who can take the word back to their parents and to their aunts and their uncles mm -hmm. and their cousins and all that. Because there's a lot of familial um, connections in town. And then a lot of the businesses that are there are those kind of small micro businesses that are run by the families of the people in there. Yes, a lot of them are. A lot of local restaurants, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot and, of practical businesses. Right, but they are serving the community. The community yes. is their sales base. Right? Yes. So the more knowledge they have, the better chance of them being successful. Yes. And then that begets more success. That's mm -hmm. what we're hoping for. 
So now, who'd you bring with you today? I brought with me uh, Mayor Ahmed, who is the president of our Entrepreneurs Club. And I brought with me uh, Micah Ford, who is the vice president of the Entrepreneurs Club and president of the Panthers Activity Council. Both wonderful young men, very eager and excited about the opportunities that entrepreneurship are going to provide them. All right, Mayor, you want to start? You're the president, so we'll start with you, right? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity. Sure. Tell us about the Entrepreneur uh, Club. How that has that been around for a while, or is this kind of new? I've been a part of the Clarkson Entrepreneurs Club, which is a charter organization at Georgia State since October of 2018. I believe that that was the first year that it was chartered in Georgia State. Mm-hmm. Um, the first semester, we really just used building the Constitution and bylaws, so um, setting a foundation for the next semesters to come. And one of the goals was to make sure that once I'm gone as a transitionary student and Micah are gone, and we put people in places of leadership that um, they have a network of people around them that can help them build services or whatever it is their business that they want to grow, um, as well as a foundation so they know, hey, here are voting processes, here are... So a structure would be in place. Exactly, building a structure. So now, is this part of a national organization? Is Entrepreneurs Club a larger organization, or is this kind of a local... Um, I will refer to mm-hmm. Dr. This, Orr for this that. one's actually a local club. Mm-hmm on our campus right so now we are tying into uh, Georgia State proper has a number eight or nine different organizations at least that are working on entrepreneurship and we are tying into that greater umbrella organization so, uh, at the university so you have that ecosystem of the the downtown campus yes. at your disposal and then the entrepreneur club of Clarkston is kind of an offshoot that's kind of Clarkston centric. It's, it's Clarkston, very good term. It's Clarkston centric and it's bringing all of the activities from this bigger umbrella group. There are a lot of colleges. I mean, we're one college at the university. Uh, Robinson College of Business does entrepreneurship. There are other colleges right. that do entrepreneurship. So, I mean, you're part of, you're here at ENI, which right. is Robinson College mm-hmm. of Business, but there are other colleges that do it. We're all just sort of tying into this bigger umbrella organization. So now, Mayor, what was your kind of the catalyst for you to get involved with the Entrepreneur Club? Um, I would say the faculty at Georgia State um, at the Clarkson campus. You were taking classes, and they made you aware of this, and you said, this sounds interesting, let me learn more. Yeah, I was in, sorry, I was in um, my accounting class, and my professor made aware of the opportunity of a growth in the Clarkson entrepreneur club and it started off as extra credit um i think that drew a lot of attention um but the people that stuck around were actually um they had an entrepreneurial mindset um so we grew kind of from there now janet mentioned earlier about the um importance of uh communicating to the clarkston public that there's resources of the university is this one of those ways that you're interacting with the public yeah definitely um I had a passion of giving back to the community. Um, I have some experience with um, nonprofit and for-profit entities. And one of the things that uh, Ms. Orr made aware to us from the get-go was we want to give back to the Clarkston ecosystem um, by using the resources that we have, whether that be through the various uh, speaking events that we have, um, anything from formulating businesses or even a platform to network off of. So you're seeing this as a vehicle to help the local economy? Yes, definitely. So now, what are some examples of ways you're actually doing that? Let Micah answer that. All right, Micah, with your, jump in With there. your student showcase. All right, and again, thank you for having me. All right, lean into that microphone like a rock star. I'm oh, sorry. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. All right. Um, before I got involved with the club, um, I was in PAC, like she stated, and I went, I'm an entrepreneur myself, and I wanted a, a platform for me and other entrepreneurs to be able to uh, showcase what they're doing and uh, and, build it and possibly sell it. Now, um, if it wasn't for Ms. Jez, my PAC advisor, she the one that connected me with Ms. Orr, and that's why I got involved with the Entrepreneurship Club. So what's PAC? 
uh, PAC is Panthers Activities Council. Um, and that club, we basically host uh, various of activities and events, whether it be like a pool party or we're having like a free breakfast. It's more social. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever heard of Spotlight? No. Oh, well, it's just this is the Activities Council downtown. But mm -hmm. we're basically we host various of activities for all aspects. And uh, we try to make it really diverse for our campus as we are a very diverse campus. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so um, I thought we better not then collab with the entrepreneurship club to see if there's any more entrepreneurs because like I already knew some, but I wanted right. to be a big event. So basically I got in contact with them. I showed them my plan. But like, I was like, hey, we have this opportunity to showcase. Uh, if you have a business, you have the ability to showcase your business and possibly sell it on campus. So and, sell the wares of whatever your business is. So mm. what's your business? My business is called Never Been Standard. I have, it's my clothing line. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically the word standard uh, in gray letters and a red line crossing it. And I'm basically saying everyone's an outstanding individual. And then, uh, so you had this concept and then you started making shirts? Mm -hmm. or did you design them or you hired someone? Um, I made the design, and, but I had the shirts made like online. Mm -hmm. So now how's that going for you? Oh, it's going pretty well. Uh, last year, I sold uh, 82 products in nine months. Uh, I sell online and in person, um, so that's it's been going well. And this and this new quarter has been doing well so far too. Now, how have you uh, kind of leveraged the resources of Georgia State to help you grow your business? Um, again, uh, entrepreneurship club, the ability to network. And um, also, uh, I plan to use the resources that the resources here downtown, the uh, maker spaces that they have down here. Um, something that I just recently found out they have a silhouette cameo three here, where I can like print certain my designs out, where I can it will be more cost effective for me than for someone else trying to print it out, and I can just heat press it on myself. Uh, so there's a lot of resources for the students that I mean that that would be difficult to find. Yes, sir. Right. So now um, when you're working with the college and they're helping you kind of with some skills to run a business, have you learned anything or do you have any advice you can share with other entrepreneurs or people starting a business that maybe learned the hard way? Oh, yes. Um, for one, like my own personal advice is take it slow and, you know, test the market out. And one thing that I learned from like school from Miss um, Nagel because uh, she helped me with my because I first started off with a business plan but she showed me something called a business canvas mm -hmm. and it was more of a simpler model for me to understand you know what is my target audience how do I plan to market it how do I plan to sell and like how I plan to execute my whole business for like the next six months so who's your target mark um, young innovators hustlers and dreamers um, be between the ages of 18 and 35 um, so you can either be a student or an entrepreneur or you're an athlete. Uh, that's basically it. And then how are you marketing? What channels are you using? I use Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and personal branding with stickers. So like I post stickers um, around the city or and then of course I hand them out for free. Mm -hmm. Now, Mayor, you're, you have your own business as well, right? That's one of the things you start a club with entrepreneurs there's everybody's got their own thing going right yeah uh, my business is a reliable development group um, what we do is provide housing for senior citizens um, in the form of personal care homes and assisted living um, the reason i got into that was because um, there is a negative uh, stigma with uh, nursing or personal care homes for the elderly. I think it's a forgotten generation, although 10,000 senior citizens are retiring every day. Um, so it's a huge population that is in need of not necessarily long-term care for malignancy, but just general assistance in getting ready in the morning, um, having a community of people around them that are you know, living their lives and wanting to thrive as well. People think that just because you're a senior citizen that your life is necessarily towards the end where you can still love um, the people that are around you. You can be a part of the community um, and and still thrive. So. so now your business seems like there's a little fewer, I mean, there's a lot more moving parts. So you need uh, to get facilities. So that's a pretty high expense and you have to get investors, I would imagine. Yeah, so... Um, 
there are a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, investors and VCs are something that we look for. Um, but as I develop my team um, and hire people, I'm looking for people that are actually passionate about people um, because it is a service industry. So the pricing um, can vary, but I'm more in, interested in providing a better quality of service to the people that I'm providing my services to. Mm -hmm. So now, is that something where the university is able to help you kind of learn how to build the team or identify what good team members are or what they look like? Uh, definitely. So a part of our um, purpose at the Clarkson Entrepreneurs is um, providing on-campus resources where we build entrepreneurs and they can have the opportunity to refine and display their product services, like what uh, My Micah mentioned at the Entrepreneur Showcase. But we also provide a career development. So if I have um, a contract with a vendor or a hospital, something that can either be business to business or business to consumer, I have those free services like Miss Nagel that comes in every Wednesday from 1030 um, a.m. on campus that can look over contracts and make sure that um, the workflow of my day or depending on whatever your business is, um, is being done in the most efficient fashion. Now, Janet, for you, um, you see this type of activity. This must make you very proud, right? This is the stuff that you hope to happen and and they're they're really it is um, running with it here somewhat intimidating mm -hmm. at how active the students are and how much they want to run their own businesses mm -hmm. and so how they're hungry for this information they very much oh they they very much do they know what you know they've got an idea but they're not quite sure what to do or they've even gone a little bit farther than that i know that uh Ms. Daigle talked from, she's the lady from Georgia Tech that I mentioned, talked to Micah about expanding what he was offering. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've got this, they have a vision, sometimes you got to help. And dream bigger, right? Sometimes you got to dream bigger, sometimes they're dreaming so big, you got to go, okay, let's, let's just start. Let's take some baby steps, right. As Micah suggested, starting slow mm -hmm. is not bad, um, but they, they it's it's sort of humbling, I guess, um, because they're so eager. Now, these skills, no matter, we talked about this in earlier episodes, the skills of an entrepreneur are transferable whether they decide to go out on their own and build their own kind of dream. But if they get a job, those same skills come into play, right? And they can help them stand out and maybe get a job it, it easier. Is, it is absolutely, that's absolutely correct. Um, the business canvas that Mike alluded to talked about what you need in terms of resources, what you need in terms of things that will cost you. And I looked at that and I thought, well, I've just recently been made a department chair. Part of it is, you know, you always want to expand your department. I thought, these are the things that I need to do right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, the term a few years ago was called an entrepreneur, right. that you're using your entrepreneur skills within a business. Right. Um, we all need them. Right. And if you look at your boss as your client, it changes how you behave. Yes. I actually mm -hmm. like to make, you know, like to make my boss look good. So, yeah. Right. Because that if the whoever's writing you your check is your client, right? Yes. Whether it's your business or your boss. Well, we have two. We have our <laughs> students also. Our That's students right. are our students are our biggest clients. That's right. You better We've make help them, them successful. We make them successful. Then I look good. If I look good, then my boss looks good, and Everybody then the college wins. looks good, and it's a win-win. So now uh, you mentioned that Clarkston has a unique population, and we talked about how entrepreneurship is kind of a universal language, and it'll help the community as a whole. So the more successful that this entrepreneurship program gets within the Clarkston campus, then the whole community can possibly benefit. Oh, very much so. Um, I'm a real believer in trade. I know trade has sort of a, get a little econ here, but trade has sort of this bad name now. It's like, oh, trade must be so you know, adversarial. Or like bartering trade? Is that what you're referring any to? Or sort any sort of trade. Of any sort of trade. Trade is always a win-win situation. And trade makes both partners better off. So the more people we have out there trading things back and forth, the more the community grows, the more the community grows, the more it can trade. It's just a win-win proposition. It's how we grow through trade. If we don't trade, if we don't have businesses, 
we don't grow. Well, before there was currency, there was trade, right? There's always been trade. Mm -hmm. It's one of the older, you know, anthropologists, that's what they find. They track trade to see what happened to societies. And the societies that traded, by the way, win. And I think there was a theory before that if you're trading, then there's less likely to go to war, right? I have that. Now, my econ textbooks never mentioned that, but I always mentioned that, that you're much less likely to invade somebody you're trading with. There are other reasons for invading, but... (laughs) Not that. So now, um, as you grow this community, you're looking for people like Micah and Mayer to take the baton, right? Because they're going to graduate. You've got a constant influx. I was looking for them to talk more today than me. (laughs) That's what you were hoping for? Maybe next round. So, Mayor, uh, what are you going to do uh, as you kind of progress in your uh, education? You're going to keep doing entrepreneurial stuff? You're going to still have these side hustles? Um, definitely. So I want to piggyback off what you guys are talking about, using the skills or the entrepreneur mindset to kind of use that in the professional realm. Um, regardless of if I'm having my own company or not, I think personal branding is very important. And Micah can allude to this as well. Um, as we move into the digital age, it's easy to lose track of um, what services you're providing and what value you bring to a company and the resources that we have at Georgia State through this club and other organizations on campus we're able to see um, what we're doing for the school what we're doing for ourselves and how we can be of benefit to our surrounding community and provide um, value not only to students but the neighboring um, businesses or budding entrepreneurs that are coming after us. So we provide leadership positions for people under us. Although we are, um, I'm personally the president and Micah is vice president, we do uh, delegate authority to um, our officers for, I guess, a a better sense for them to be um, decentralized. So we don't necessarily look over them and say, here's what you need to do, but we give them tasks and say, hey, here's what the bigger picture is. And you can uh, form committees and and grow from there. So you give them autonomy, and you just say, this is what we're trying to get to, so go and make it happen. Yeah, we, I, I believe in um, my peers, and that they're very capable. So now, what's been the most rewarding part of being an entrepreneur for you, Mayor? Um, autonomy, that I'm um, building a life that I am in charge of, um, regardless of if, if I'm self-employed or employed by someone else and um, being able to use my skills to give back to the community that helped um, get me to where I am right now. And Micah, what's the most rewarding part for you? That I'm happy. (laughs) (laughs) You're happy in the sense that you have some control of your, you have some control over things, right? Yeah, so to expand on that a little bit more, I'm happy that the fact, because before I came to Georgia State, I was at Alabama A&M, and I went to school like without knowing what my passion was at all. And like, cause I was just following society's footsteps. You know, my parents was like, hey, you gotta go to college. And it's like, okay, cool. But it's like, I'm doing good at school, but it's like, what is my purpose after school? Cause I think forward a lot. Like I like to plan like two, three years out. So I had, you know, dropped out, but, and then like, I came back cause I figured out what my passion was. Like I did my own personal research. I got more experience in the real work world, uh, in the real, in the world workforce and so like i'm just happy the fact that i found my passion i know what i want to do like 5 10 15 years from now and then once you know that and you have what you're aiming at then it kind of it's a lot easier right because yes. now there's certain steps you got to go through yes so that's free yes really free i love the autonomy of it and then for you uh what's the dream what does this look like uh the dr- at the end of the day uh for my brand um i don't want to say like i'm big headed or anything but in the future, I, I see myself competing with Nike and Champion and all those other big brands because um, cause I don't see a lot of brands that really represent my culture personally and, like, what we stand for. I mean, I, I see it, but it's like there's not that many black-owned businesses that are up there in the clothing industry that I see personally. I mean, yes, there's Jordan, but still it's owned by Nike. Mm-hmm. So, like, I want to be at one of those few that start their own – one of the few black entrepreneurs that started a big sports brand slash fashion brand in the industry. So now if somebody wanted to learn more, is there a website? What, how do people get a hold of your stuff and learn more about it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so on my website, I have my about page. It has more description about everything. Uh, the website is Never Been Standard, NVRBenStandard.com. 
and there you can uh, see my about page and the story and I explain even more about why I started my brand and how it represents you because my brand is basically like like I said before is saying that you're an outstanding individual like I had to realize that the word because the word that I see didn't describe myself was standard so that's why I have it crossed out with a red line and then so that people can buy the stuff right there from that page too mm-hmm Good stuff. Well, thank you for sharing your story. No problem. What about you, Mayor? What if somebody wants to learn more, or get a hold of you, or connect with you? What's the best way to do it? Um, so I'm on LinkedIn. You can look me up um, uh, just under my name, Mayor Ahmed, M A H E R, and my last name is A H M E D. Um, I check that regularly, just like my text messages and emails. So I think that's a great place for us to connect because it, it provides you a legitimacy. And then we can see where um, our business practices are aligned. And then they can learn more about your um, senior care offering as well. Yes. Um, I also want to uh, plug the Clarkson Entrepreneurs as well because um, they provided me this platform today. Um, so you can follow us um, on Instagram at Clarkston Entrepreneurs, or if you're at Georgia State, you can go to the Panther Involvement Network, um, PIN, at gcu.edu, and look us up. We're one of the organizations listed on there as well. And Janet, for you, what's if a business owner in Clarkston wants to connect with the university, what's the best way to get a hold of <clears throat> you or somebody there? Best way to get a hold of me is to email me at the at the university address, which is just J O R R eight at gsu.edu. There were seven other Janet Ors. <laughs> well, one of them is one of them is Justin. So, the, but I was a little surprised there were eight other J Ors before me. Right. Good stuff. Well, thank you for sharing your story today. You're doing important work, and you're really serving the community. Well, we're enjoying it, and it's it's uh, it's exciting. It's it very, is. very exciting, and it's only it's going to grow. We're starting, right. you know, like like Micah uh, said, Micah, we're starting baby a little steps, slow, baby steps, but it's growing. So I feel like we've got a few more minutes here. I wonder if we couldn't dive into Micah's thing for a couple of minutes. And I, I suppose you know me well enough. It's probably a, a roundabout way of talking about me, like which is one of my favorite topics. But your business, Micah, strikes me as one where you're really not selling apparel and accessories you're selling a a, a mindset a culture a, a lifestyle and so I want, the reason i find that so fascinating quite candidly is at business radio x one of my responsibilities is to grow our network of people in different markets who will run business radio x studios with the express purpose of supporting and celebrating business in these different markets and while there is some tangible aspect to letting them tap into our brand equity and teaching them the mechanics of running shows and how to market shows to professional services people, really what is being sold, if you will, is this, uh, or tapped into is this, this mindset, this culture, this movement of, hey, look, traditional media is not getting this job done. There is room for a platform out there in all these markets. So I feel like I'm trying to build and market a movement. And I feel like maybe you're, you're in the same boat. Can you just speak to that a little bit more? Because that's really what you're selling, right? Yes, I'm selling a mindset. Um, I don't know if y'all are too familiar with the Ross Block test. Um, you know with the little blobs and he's like what do you see oh I've like, seen it on television yeah, yeah. so um, cause uh, my first major was psychology before I switched to business and I love mm -hmm. psychology but I don't see myself listening to people's problems but besides the <laughs> fact <laughs> <laughs> no it's important but, but he wants to know what makes people tick yeah That's right but Janet it's important to know what you don't want to do too right yeah, That's important. yeah. it's yeah. very important to know what you don't want to do and so um so I found it fascinating enough when I first started with my design, I'll show it to some people and they when the first thing they see is standard. And then some people they will see not standard. And so like with the Rossbot plus, whatever you see, you can tell what their mindset is. So when people tell uh -huh. me standard, I know where their mindset is. Whether they see if they if they tell me standard, that means something that they're doing in their life or they see themselves as standard. But if some people tell me not standard, then they feel then I know that they're either finding their fashion or they're working to progress into their passion, like they're on that journey. So like when people tell me that they're standard, I you know I explain that to them like, look, it's never been standard, and then they be like, oh okay, and then like then they be, I I think I like hit a nerve when I tell them that it's not standard, like and it's never been standard, because I'm like, are you standard? Because like <laughs> I don't think so. So like 
And people don't want to be represented as standard. They want to be represented as an outstanding individual. So that's why I feel like people are following my brand and they support me. Um, uh, like Miss Brady Nagel says, you know, she feels like I need to expand and I plan to go to market days at like uh, and pop up shots at like Spellman, Clark Atlanta, and the ones that pop up on Eventbrite. But, but those conversations are going to be all about not being standard, never being standard, b achieving some velocity velocity out of standard. Mm -hmm. It's gonna as you build out your company, it's gonna be a lot. The conversation is gonna be as important, if not more so. Than the cool looking hoodie with the word with the red line through it. Yes. Is that true? Yes. It's, it's going to be more. I have plenty of plans for it. I don't want to say it right now because I'm still working on it because, uh, you know, I'm trying to take baby steps. Right. But, but yeah, in the future, it's going to be even more philosophy. But but again, the main goal is just to uh, change people's mindsets to stop living the standard lifestyle. Because I don't know if you realize in our society, everyone's they're kind of doing the same thing. Like they're going on social media and they're trying to get clout by doing some reckless stuff or doing something that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and they're trying to get their little 15 minutes of fame. And I'm just like, there's other ways of doing things to be successful and have a successful and or fun lifestyle, I would say. Because um, just recently, I was just telling my friends about the stock market and how like if you would have invested in let's say square cash back in january which was fifty dollars which turned into seventy five dollars you would have made twenty five dollars and it's just like they just have this little standard mindset that i tell them like why are you wasting a thousand dollars at linux mall when you could be using that money for else things that that's really my movement is to persuade and motivate individuals to do to think outside the box and not like live the standard lifestyle that they see on TV and on social media because nobody wants to be the same. I, well, I don't, but everybody shouldn't be the same because that's you, the standard. That's that, it's like the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> you have such an exciting time in, in front of you. And, and again, Janet, this must make you so proud to be hanging out with people that are thinking and doing like this. It, it's what he was talking about, everybody being standard, one of the reasons I really enjoy teaching on the Clarkston campus is because it is so diverse. And there is a lot of energy when everybody isn't exactly the same. Um, and so, yes, and I've never liked being standard. <laughs> well, I know you mentioned earlier in the conversation when you and Lee were talking that you took some pride in your heritage, I think, and, and, and wanting to... Uh, support and celebrate specifically uh, black entre entrepreneurs and, I, and you'll need to find out where your niche is and, and, and those, uh, those areas of specificity that you really want to capitalize on. And let me tell you right now, both the, the clothing itself, but more so the, the big why behind it, very compelling, very attractive to a middle-aged white guy, just so <laughs> you know. I'm not saying that you have to cater to us, but let me tell you where I, you know, I'm subject to get my wallet out for that too. So I don't just, discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and maybe that's a good way to wrap this thing with this thought or an observation anyway. Uh, and, and I want to pull Mike, uh, I mean, uh, mayor into this conversation as well. The why for these two young men just seems to be huge. The, the why behind your, your business mayor, it's, it's huge. That's what's driving you, isn't it? It's, uh, uh, I mean, talk a little bit more about that as, as as we wrap, how do you how do you stay connected to the why, and what do you do to make sure that you're adequately conveying the the why day in and day out? The why behind my business is um, pushing people to realize that how we develop and how we work as a society um, across the entire spectrum of age, and it goes beyond demographic or race and religion. It's um, seeing people as people first and realizing that um, we work best when we're around each other. Human beings by nature are um, adaptive and we can provide provide services to other people and, and help other people by, you know, taking care of our elders. Um, I was really family oriented. I grew up in a, in a family where my parents are immigrants. I'm a first generation American. Uh -huh. um, I saw that my dad had to leave um, his master's program to work in um, Walmart and then started his own business and he owned 
a gas station and that turned into a couple of gas stations. So that kind of was in my blood. Um, I thought that I wanted to be a doctor because um, that's the way you become successful when you're an immigrant. You become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. Right, right. Um, but I knew that I had business entities. I always found ways of making money, um, whether that was like selling candy in elementary school or lemonade shops or in high school started uh, mowing grasses, growing, sorry, growing Mowing the lawn. I thought you were going like to say growing neighbors. grasses. <laughs> uh, Not that's Georgia. A different that's topic that's, for a different time. Yeah, that's a different conversation. <laughs> the Colorado um, campus. The Colorado campus. Right. <laughs> well, uh, uh, we won't get into that now, but um, some of the services that are provided are, are through hospitals. And um, I saw that family is a huge part of who I am, and everyone can relate to um, taking care of your family, regardless of um, how old they are, where they're living in the community. Um, so getting back to what your original question was, is that um, the why was realizing that you don't have to alienate people um, that are older or senior citizens and bring them into um, our community. I know the Atlanta Beltline is something that's developing. I see Atlanta mm -hmm. is the forefront of one of the greatest cities in America, if not the top five in my mind. Um, and as that develops, I want to put those um, facilities and services towards the senior citizens so that they're not just out in Noonan or some outskirt town. Not that Noonan's right. a bad place, I love Noonan. <laughs> <laughs> but having them in the city, because um, I think it's really important to be around people that can teach you um, and have been through a lot more life than you have. Um, learning from each other and, and, and helping each other as a community. Well, I think it's a very noble pursuit, and uh, my wife Holly and I would love to be uh, on the belt line. So if you can get that figured out for us, that would be fantastic. Indulging uh, my need to visit some more caused us to bury everybody's coordinates and websites. So before we wrap, let's go back around. We'll start with you, Micah. Coordinates if people want to reach out, learn more about Never Been Standard, want to have a conversation with you or somebody on your team, what's the best way for them to uh, website, email, whatever's appropriate? Um, really Instagram uh, at NBS Apparel. Uh, again, that's NBS Apparel. That's my Instagram. Just DM me. I always check it. I check it like every 15 minutes, really. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Mayor? You can find me on uh, LinkedIn, um, M-A-H-E-R, and my last name is A-H-M-E-D. I check that readily as well. Great. And Miss Janet? And mine would just be my college, my university email would be J-O-R-R-8 at gsu.edu and like the boys I'm or the young men I'm always looking at it <laughs> and do you comes a, right to my phone do you have I a do website for the Clarkson campus we're working on it well we're actually we're yeah we're in the process of getting a website for the entrepreneurs club mm -hmm. which we're real excited about right now um, it's perimeter.gsu.edu and then you have to go. And, and you got to look for Clarkson. Got to look for Clarkson. All right. So that's a good next step. That's a good project, right? Right. Get the entrepreneurs <laughs> on the website. That's page. right. <laughs> Landing we, page. We got the, we got it. We're getting a page. Well, thank you all again for sharing your story. Keep up the good work. Keep us posted. We're going to be following. We're going to be following all of you. Thank you very much for inviting us. Good. All thank right. You. We will be back in a few from Georgia State University Entrepreneurship and Innovation Institute.